Hello everyone, welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to talk about the roles and responsibilities of a seafarer on board a cargo ship. First of all, I am going to talk about the different type of ships that are flying around the world. One, we have passenger ships and two, cargo ships. The name themselves speak for themselves. Anyway, a passenger ship carries passengers, cargo ships carry goods. In simpler terms, compare this with an airplane. A passenger airplane carries passengers and a cargo airplane carries cargo. Similarly, a passenger ship carries passengers and a cargo ship carries cargo or goods. Now, there are many similarities between the airline industry and the shipping industry. The only difference is the airline industry is more common with passengers and the shipping industry is more common with cargo. Why? Because an aircraft cannot carry cargo in volume, whereas a ship can. On the other way, an airplane can carry passengers swiftly from one place to another, a ship cannot. So this is the basic difference between a ship and an airplane from an economic point of view. Now, I personally work on cargo ships. I have always worked on cargo ships. Now, ships are also classified by their area of flying or trade. For example, we have ships which fly in near coastal areas which do not venture out into the open sea. And we have ships who are going into the open sea. Those are called foreign going ships. So we have near coastal vessels or NCV and foreign going vessels, FG. I work on foreign going vessels. Now, in this video, I will only be talking about cargo ships because I work on cargo ships. Cargo ships, as the name suggests, carry cargo. There are a lot of cargo ships. The different categories of cargo ships are based on the cargo they carry. First, we have containers, which contain cellular containers on board and transport them from one port to another. This is a container which is carried on board. I hope everybody has seen this going on trucks on the road. So basically these containers are transported from the warehouses to the ships and on the ships they go from one place to another place and then they again are carried on board trucks to the different warehouses and from there the goods are distributed and delivered to your doorsteps. The next type of ships is bulk carriers. What are bulk carriers? As the name suggests, they carry cargo in bulk, in huge amounts. For example, sugar, coal, cement, sulfur, wheat, grain and so on. Next type of ships is the tankers. These are very specialized type of ships. Why the name tankers? Because they are like tanks. They carry inflammable cargo. There are three types of tankers. One, oil tankers. Two, chemical tankers. Three, gas tankers. Oil tankers carry oil such as petroleum, crude oil, diesel oil. Chemical tankers carry chemicals such as naphthalene, jet fuel, etc. And gas tankers, they carry gas cargo such as LNG, LPG but in liquid form. So all the petrol and the diesel around the world are transported by tankers. The tankers are very specialized type of ships and they require very specialized type of crew to be operated by. The tankers involve high level of danger, explosion, fire on board so they require very skilled people on them. The next one is Roro or car carrier. These ships carry cars around the world. For example, BMW, a Mercedes or a Porsche is manufactured in Germany and it is transported to say India by car carriers. You would be surprised to know that thousands and thousands of Porsche cars like BMWs, Mercedes, Rolls Royce are all transported on board one ship. Pretty interesting, isn't it? We also have livestock carriers, cattle carriers, and reefer ships. Livestock carriers and cattle carriers, they carry livestock and cattle from one place to another. And reefer ships, they are specialized type of ships 
which carry food items in frozen form. So these are the various type of ships which fly all around the world. I personally work on containers. So now that we have talked about the different types of ships, now let's talk about the different departments. We have three departments on board a cargo ship. Deck, Engine and Salon. The Deck department looks after the navigation of the ship. The Engine department looks after the maintenance of the engine and the other machineries on board. The Saloon department looks after the catering and the food on board. Now let's talk about the different ranks on board. Firstly, from the deck department, there are five ranks. Starting with the captain, chief officer, second officer, third officer and the cadet. The cadet is also known as a trainer. The captain, as the name suggests, he is the captain of the ship, he is overall in charge of the ship, he is the senior most of the ship. A captain's word is considered the final word of a ship. He is the commanding master and the supreme authority on board. Next in line we have the chief officer. He is also the second in command. If something happens to the captain of the ship, for example if he is incapacitated or dead, then the chief officer resumes the role of the captain on a temporary basis. He is also the head of the deck department. He looks after the safety of the deck department. He is also the head of the deck officers, that is third officer, second officer and the cadet. He is directly responsible for the training of the cadet. He is also in charge of the deck rating. Chief officer is generally charged with the safety of the ship and also the cargo work. He looks after and assigns different kind of jobs to the ratings and officers. He supervises the life-saving equipment and is also a management level employee. There are four management level employees on board a cargo ship. Captain, Chief Officer, Chief Engineer and Second Engineer. Next we have is the Second Officer. He is the third in line of command. If anything happens to the Chief Officer, the Second Officer will resume his role. The Second Officer is generally charged with the navigational upkeeping of the ship. He supervises all the navigational equipment, whether they are working correctly, he is in charge of their maintenance. He is also charged with the upkeep of the charts on board and he also helps the captain in maintaining the medicine inventory on board. Generally, the captain is considered as the ship's medical officer and the second officer is only a help to him. Next in line is the third officer, which is me right now. He is directly responsible for the life-saving appliances on board and the firefighting equipment on board. The third officer also is in charge of the flags inventories on board. In general, the three deck officers, that is the chief officer, the second officer and the third officer, they are responsible for the safe navigation of the ship. The three officers take turns in navigating the ship. During a voyage, a ship runs for 24 hours and somebody needs to make sure that the ship is running in the right way. Who will do that? Deck officer. From where? The bridge. Now, this means that the bridge needs to be manned 24 hours. It's not possible for one person to man the bridge 24 hours. So, the 24 hours are divided into 6 equal parts of 4 hours each. Each 4 hour watches are kept by one of the deck officers. For two times. So in the morning one deck officer keeps a four hour watch and again after eight hours he keeps another watch. So in that way one deck officer has to keep two four hour watches in a, and he does a total of eight hours. In this way three deck officers will cover a total span of 24 hours. That's how we man the bridge. That's Generally a chief officer keeps watch from four to eight third officer relieves him from 8 to 12 and then the second officer relieves the third officer from 12 to 4 and once again the chief officer comes over at 4 he keeps a watch till 8 and then again the third officer comes and relieves him at 8 and the second officer at 12 and this cycle goes on this is how watches go on at sea so that's all about the deck department now let's talk about the engine department the engine department Similarly, like the deck department, comprises of five engineers. Chief engineer, second engineer, third engineer, fourth engineer and the fifth engineer. Also called trainee marine engineer. The chief engineer is the head of the engine department and he is directly responsible for the 
whole maintenance of all the machineries on board. Next, we have the second engineer who is in charge of the main engine generally and the engine room. He also supervises and assigns jobs and looks after the tasks required to be done, the maintenance required to be carried out in the engine or other machineries on board. Next, we have the third engineer. He is also a junior engineer and so is a fourth engineer. Now, the, the work of the third engineer and the fourth engineer vary from ship to ship depending on the chief engineer and the second engineer. And a training marine engineer or a fifth engineer, as the name suggests, is a training. Similarly to the deck department, the engine department also keeps watches in four hours. And at times, if the ship is fitted with an UMS or unmanned machinery spaces, there is no need to keep watch by an engineer. Rather, the ship can be left unattended on itself, provided there are certain circumstances. Now, there is one interesting fact about the deck and the engine department. Although the general practice of keeping watches is 4 hours, but sometimes due to operational circumstances or restrictions, the watches can be extended to 6 hours. When? At ports. At ports where cargo operation is ongoing, the chief officer, as I previously said, is responsible for the cargo work. So, he cannot be charged with a watch. So. In that case, the second officer and the third officer, they take over his role, they work 2 hours extra each and they cover 6-6 six, six hours each. In that way, one person covers 12 hours and two persons cover 24 hours. Now, what watch does one need to keep at port? The ship is not running. At port, the crew needs to check whether the cargo operation is going on as per the cargo plan. Now, what is a cargo plan? It's a plan discussed between the ship's crew and the shore people. The ship's crew needs only to ensure that the cargo is going on as per the discussed plan. If there are any discrepancies, one needs to report this so that things come back in order. Now that we have talked about the two departments of the ship, we are left with the saloon department. The saloon department comprises only of two persons, that is the chief cook and the galley steward. The chief cook, as the name suggests, is the chief of the cooks but nowadays there is only one cook earlier days there used to be several cooks and the chief cook used to be their head but nowadays on cargo ships there is only one cook but the name has gone on and the galley steward is only a helping hand to the chief cook also the galley steward or the gs looks after the cleaning of the ship now these were the officers i talked about now there are ratings also Similarly, they are grouped into three departments. The deck department has ratings such as the bosun, who is the head of all the ratings. The chief officer plans work, hands them over to the bosun, and the bosun assigns these jobs to the respective other crew. Also, the bosun, being the head of all the ratings, looks after the welfare of the ratings. He conveys and communicates the grievances of the ratings to the officer. Next we have the able-bodied seamen or ABs and we also have ordinary seamen or OS. The ABs and the OS they are directly answerable to the bosun and the chief officer. The job of the AB and the OS are basically deck job can be anything cleaning, chipping, painting, all sorts of jobs which are there required by the crew on board. Also the ABs and the OS keep boat watches that is the cargo watch. The ABs who are certified watch keepers also keep watches with the officers. The ordinary seamen, however, can keep watches provided they have a certificate of watch keeping. Now, why do ABs need to keep watches? Because regulation says one person should not be kept for watches during hours of darkness. That is, generally at night, a deck officer cannot be left alone with the watch. He needs to be accompanied by a rating, generally an AB. These were the deck ratings. Now let's talk about the engine ratings. The engine ratings are the motorman and the wiper. The motorman are very similar to an AB and the wiper is very similar to an ordinary seamen. Their jobs is to carry out day-to-day -day engine and machinery jobs and also assist the engineers. There is also an additional rank that is called a fitter. A fitter can belong to either a deck department or an engine department. A fitter's job is mainly welding, gas cutting and all sorts of complex jobs. So that more or less sums up all the ranks and responsibilities on board a cargo ship. This was only an overview of all the ranks, but in my next series of videos, you will see 
from the practical aspect of a ship. What what we do actually. This will be very interesting and I hope you will enjoy it. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it and I hope that this video was able to give you a clearer idea of how actually a cargo ship works. So if you like this video, do like, share and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. Stay safe and stay blessed.